So thankful that you're here this morning. You, just as a reminder, we've gathered uh, together this morning as the dearest place on earth, as the beautiful bride of Jesus. And he loves us, uh, as Glenn made it evident while ago, more than anything else in the world. And it's so good to be part of his family. And I'm thankful that you're here. There's a Bible class teacher that was preparing class uh, for her six-year-olds. And she was going to be talking about heaven. And she wanted to know what her six-year-old knew about heaven. So in order to find out, she decided to ask them a few questions. And so she started and she asked, if I sold my house and I sold my car and I had a garage sale and, and all the money that I earned, if I gave it to the church and I used it to help the poor, would it get me to heaven? And the whole class of six-year-olds together with a, a loud voice yelled, no. She said, okay, well, what if every week I cleaned the church building, I vacuumed the auditorium, I cleaned the bathrooms, I took out the trash, and I did everything that goes a, a, along with that, even mowed the, the yard once a week at, at the church building. If I did all of those things, plus sell my house and all of that and give the money, would that get me to heaven? And together, with a loud voice, they yelled, no. And so she asked another question. She said, well, what if I do all of those things, but, I, you know, I'm kind to animals, and every Sunday I, I have candy for all the young children, and, and I, I'm just, you know, I do everything I, I can to do what's right, and I love my family, and, and all of those things. She, you know, just kept going and going and going. She said, if I do all of that, will that get me to heaven? Again, they said, no. And then one child blurted out, or she, well, she said, well, what do I have to do to get to heaven? And one child blurted out, you have to die. <laughs> well, I guess there's truth to that, and I guess there's the problem with that as well. You have to die to go to heaven. This physical body has to pass away for me to inherit eternal life, at least in the life to come. You know, there have been several people who've written books about their own death and their experience in heaven, and they've come back to life, and then they've penned books about their experiences. Um, there's a number of, of problems with that. Uh, first off, the only thing that they agree on is they all died first uh, and then came back to life. Second, uh, none of them uh, or, or anything that they say, that they don't use Scripture to support or, subs or substantiate anything that they write about. And then last, but, but not least by any means, one of them has admitted it was just a hoax and fabricated everything just in order to make money. And so the, but I think the list could go on. But most of us would agree that you, you have to die to go to heaven. But that's pretty much where the agreement ends with, with everybody across the board. Even the Bible agrees with that. The Bible says, as Jesus was telling a story about the rich man and Lazarus, and, and the rich man dies and uh, goes to Hades, but he says uh, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. Paul was writing Philippians chapter 1 and verse uh, 23. He's talking about, you know, whether he would uh, depart uh, and be with God or, or stay here in the world, and which would be far more beneficial to uh, the Philippians. And, and this is what he says. He says, for my desire is to depart or die and be with Christ. He says, for that is far better. Over the next few weeks, we're going to uh, examine a, a popular theory, probably the most popular theory about how people get to heaven. And when I say heaven, I simply mean spending uh, life after death with God. That's what I'm talking about. And despite this theory, and as popular as it is, probably the, the most popular theory about how a person, uh, an individual, gets to heaven, and despite of its theory, uh, this popular, how popular it is, it, it doesn't make sense. If you would, if you'll really just sit down, and you'll think about it and reason through it and open up God's Word, you'll quickly realize, if you're honest with yourself, this popular theory does not make sense. But smart, educated, 
accomplished men and women are counting on this theory to be more than a theory. They're counting on it to be truth. And you say, well, why are so many people counting on this theory to get to heaven if it doesn't make sense? And I think the answer to that is they're just too busy. People are too busy. People are busy with, with making a living. People are busy with uh, raising a family. They're busy with, with homework. They're busy with sports. They're busy with fill in the blank. Life's busy, right? But we're just too busy that people don't stop and think about eternity. How often do you stop and think about eternity? Do you live life thinking about eternity. The Bible instructs us to be people who have this idea of eternity and think about eternity and keep it in our minds. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, he encourages to store up treasures in heaven where moth and rust can't destroy and where thieves can't break in and steal. Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 3, Starting in verse 1, he says, If you've been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. The Bible encourages us to think about eternity, to live with eternity in mind. The Bible makes that very plain to us. So the theory, you may have, you've heard it before. This popular theory on how people get to heaven is very simple. Good people go to heaven, right? That's what the world says. Good people go to heaven. Ask anybody, what happens when you die? And they'll say something along these lines. Well, you either go to, to heaven or hell. And if you keep pressing that, and, and, you know, and, and, well, and, and the Bible affirms it. The Bible affirms there's two places. Matthew chapter 25 is Jesus is talking about the day of judgment when, when the Son of Man comes and all the, uh, the people from a, uh, all over, uh, everybody that's ever lived, let's we'll just put it that way, uh, is gathered before the throne. It says he separates the sheep from the goats. And the sheep, those that are on his right, will inherit eternal life. And the goats who are on his left, you remember what he says, will inherit eternal punishment. And then you ask him, well, okay, who goes where? There's a heaven and there's a hell. Who goes where? I can't tell you their exact words, but it'll be something along these lines. Good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. Have you ever heard that? You've had conversations with people. If you have a spiritual conversation and, and you lead them down this path, something along these lines is exactly what they'll say. And the logic goes something like this. And it makes sense. It just seems to make sense. If there's a good God who lives in a good place, then it would make sense that the good place is reserved for good people, right? It makes sense. And then bad people will end up in the bad place. Most major world religions believe in a good God who lives in a, in a good place. But each major world religion also has their own definition of what is good and what's not good. But what all have in common is that men and women, they would say, need to do certain things and not do certain things in order to go to heaven. But like I said, there is a huge problem with this theory that good people go to heaven. Let me ask you this. If God was able to appear before you or you were able to stand before God uh, at any moment and he asked you a question, why should I let you in heaven? What would you tell him? What would your answer be? If you're like most people, it may be something like this. Well, I've always tried, and we would probably stutter a little bit. Uh, I've always tried to do the right thing. You know, I was faithful to my spouse. I, I loved my children. 
you know, I, I didn't lie, cheat, and, and steal my way through life. I did my best to be honest. I'm sure I told a lie here or there, but I tried to, to be honest. You know, I, I did my very best to be nice and kind and, and polite to people around me. I tried to love them the way that I was supposed to. Why do you think that most people's answers, they fall back on what they've tried to do? Or maybe the, the good things that they've done in life. I'll tell you, because most people believe good people just go to heaven. If I'm good, if, I'm do, if I've done what I'm supposed to do, and I've been honest and I've treated people fairly, then I've, by most definition, I, I've, I've been good. And good people go to heaven. You know, there's things that happen in life uh, occasionally Something happens that, that forces us, even when we're too busy to stop and think about eternity, there are things that happen in life that force us to do that. Some don't like to think about that. People don't like to stop and think about death. It's understandable, I guess. But every now and then, there'll be a, a funeral. And someone that you know or has been very close to you has passed from this life. And it forces you to stop and think about eternity and about your life and how you're living. Ever gone to a funeral and left thinking that person would spend eternity separated from God? I've never heard anybody preach a funeral like that. Most funerals you go to are of good people, right? Good people. Sometimes you get sick and it, maybe it becomes chronic and it, it's just, you, you know, you talk to the doctor and you, you stop and you contemplate your own mortality. We don't like to think about death, but it's a reality. The older we get, the closer that we get to it. David says this, but truly, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. James reminds us, James 4, do you, uh, you do not know what tomorrow will bring, for what is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time, then vanishes away. James reminds us that life is brief. Even if you live to be a hundred, with all things considered, life is brief. It doesn't last very long. I know a gentleman just nine days ago, without any kind of warning, died from a massive heart attack. Life's brief. Death comes. The mortality rate for humans is 100%. 100%. So if good people go to heaven, I'm going to ask you, are you good enough? Are you good enough? A majority of people, the population, believe that good people go to heaven, but they're scared of death because they suffer from what's called adelophobia. You may already know this. The fear of not being good enough. The fear of not being good enough. They've been good. Matter of fact, they've probably been better than most people. And they would probably say, well, you know, the good in my life outweighs the bad. I've done, I've done a lot of good in my, I think. At least from what I understand good to be, I've done a lot of good in my life. But there's always the fear of uncertainty. There's always the, the what if or how good is good enough. Is it 51%? You know, if you get a 51 on a test, you still failed, Right? But 51% is the majority, right? So how, how much is, is good enough? Where's the line? What's the standard? Where do I stand right now of the spectrum of good and bad? Well, there's always the chance that I'm not good enough. That the bad outweighs the good. And if that's the case, if that's my life right now, do I have enough time to do enough good then to, to outweigh the bad? 
What if, what if I do everything that I know to be right and I do my best to live a good life and be a good person only to die to figure out it's 50-50? Then what? Where does that get me? And who's in charge of keeping score? Are they accurate? Are they partial? Did I do something to make them just mad enough that they just tip the scales not in my favor? I, I hope the person's perfect because I'm not. I hope they haven't overlooked something. I hope they weren't asleep when I did something good and not awake when I did something bad. I mean, you, there's uncertainty to this, right? You know, it would be great if I could get a copy of the rules and I could know exactly what good is and what bad is. And, and, and to let me know how I'm doing in, in this. So I know that I'm walking or living in the right d direction. Because my eternity and your eternity, it hangs in the balance. And I would like to know where I'm at. There's another illustration. In between those lines is your life. That's the straight and narrow Bottom is your baptism. You become a, a Christian. A death, you see, uh, either outside of those lines is, is wrong. And if you're anything like me, your life probably looks like this. Right? You know, I, I do good. I try to do good. But sometimes temptation gets the best and I say something I shouldn't say. Maybe I, I raise my voice at my, my children or, or something along those lines. Maybe. But, but, then, but then I realize what I did wrong and I, and I repent. I, I make things right with God and now I'm back in, in His good graces. But you know, I smashed my finger and I said something I shouldn't have said and now I'm outside of the lines again. But I better hurry up and ask God's forgiveness so I'm back in the straight and narrow again. And then somebody pulled out of me in traffic and I had a, not a nice thought about them. And I'm back outside of God's graces on this side. And then, but I said, you know, a prayer of, of, of repentance and I'm, I'm back in line. Do you see where I'm going with this? And my only hope is, is that I die in between the lines after, after I say a prayer of repentance and thanksgiving. Because if I do something and I'm outside those lines before I have the chance to repent, I have not been good enough. You know people that live like this? Maybe you're one of them. If you are, I hope you will be back over the next several weeks because each one of these lessons is going to build on one another. And the hope if, you, if people that live their life like this, the hope they have is not hope. It's wishful thinking. That's not the hope that we find in the Bible. That's not the hope that Jesus died to give us. It's not wishful thinking. Why are most people confident that good people go to heaven, but they are unsure where they stand with God? Why is it that really good people at best hope that they make it? And I'll tell you, because nobody can tell you how good you have to be. Nobody. Nobody can tell you how good you have to be in order to get to heaven. But I'll ask you, do you want to be confident that you will spend eternity with God? Don't you want to be confident in that? I don't, I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about pride. That's not what I'm talking about. Jesus didn't die so you can be prideful and arrogant about your life. He died so that you can humbly say, I know because of him that I don't have anything to worry about. And that I'll see him face to face. And I'll spend eternity with him. John writes, 1 John chapter 5, in verse 13, he says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. 
John, an inspired writer, says, I'm writing these things to you who believe in the Son of God that you may know beyond the shadow of any doubt that you have eternal life. As a child of God, as a follower of Jesus, you can know, you can be confident, not in yourself, but in the goodness of Jesus Christ that you will spend eternity in heaven. And if you don't know, if you're not confident, if you are afraid, if you are unsure, please find me or anybody else and talk to them after services and let us sit down and open up God's Word and study with you and see what the Bible has to say about Who's going to spend eternity with God? Tonight, or this morning, if you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, we give you that opportunity. If you're ready to put your faith in the work of Jesus Christ, not in yourself, but in the work of Jesus to save you, you can do that this morning by repenting of your sins, being immersed into Jesus for the forgiveness of those sins, raised to walk a child of God who possesses His Spirit to guide you and to lead you as you live your life like Jesus Christ. If you're already a child of God, but you're uncertain, you don't know, you're living in fear, please make things right with Him. Come and talk to us and let us study. Whatever your need is, please come forward while we stand and while we sing.